This is five dead giveaways someone's enhanced based on science. If you've spent any time in the fitness world, you've definitely seen those natty or not videos or the Reddit threads where everyone plays detective. But here's the thing, most people are just guessing based on looks alone. Today I'm breaking down the five scientific signs of enhancement that even experienced lifters miss. This isn't another speculation video or gym gossip. We're talking peer reviewed research and actual physiology. Stick around for number five because it's the most reliable indicator in my opinion and almost nobody talks about it. In fact, I didn't even know about it before this video. Before we dive in, let me be clear. This video isn't about calling anyone out or adding to any internet drama. While natty or not discussions can be entertaining, we're looking at this from a scientific perspective to understand what's naturally achievable. Whether you're trying to set realistic expectations for your own fitness journey or you're tired of all the guesswork and want to understand the actual science of performance enhancement, this information is going to be eye-opening. The first dead giveaway is what I call the age defier. Here's the science. Your natural hormone levels peak in your 20s, then decline about 1-2% to per year after 30. This means if you see someone in their 40s suddenly putting on masks like a college athlete, something's probably up. Take The Rock, for example. Look at him in his 20s as a football player, then in the WWE in his early 30s. Impressive but natural looking gains. But then look at him in his late 40s. He's literally bigger and more muscular at 50, now he's 52, than he was at 30. That defies natural physiology completely. Your body simply doesn't work that way without help. Let me break down what natural gains typically look like. Year one and two of lifting, those are your significant newbie gains years. Years three to four, slower but steady progress. Years five and onward, minimal visible changes without perfect diet and training. But when someone's enhanced, well, that timeline goes out the window. The Journal of Clinical Endocrinology actually showed that enhanced individuals can gain more muscle doing nothing, literally sitting on the couch, the natural lifters can with proper training. That's wild, right? I mean, think about it. If you could naturally get bigger and stronger and more muscular in your 40s and 50s than you could in your 20s and 30s, wouldn't every older athlete have done it? But look at natural athletes throughout history. They all peaked physically in their late 20s to early 30s. That's just how the human body works. We saw this recently with Mike Tyson and Jake Paul. I love Mike Tyson. I was rooting for Mike Tyson, but Tyson at 58, does not have it against someone in their 20s. The second sign is what Derek from More Plates, More Dates calls Death Star Delts. Your shoulders and upper traps have a high concentration of androgen receptors relative to the rest of your body. This means that they respond dramatically to performance enhancing drugs. Wanna see a perfect example? Look at Tom Hardy's transformation for Warrior and later for Bane in Dark Knight Rises. His traps literally blew up like balloons in a matter of months. Those mountainous traps that seem to start from his ears, well, that's exactly what we're talking about. I have similarly disproportionate traps. You do the math on that one. That kind of explosive trap development in such a short time frame is a classic indicator. Look at natural bodybuilders from the pre-1940s era. Notice their traps were developed, but never had that mountainous look we see today. Same with shoulders. They were strong, but never had that 3D ball look. Now, there are also some secondary signs that often show up when someone's enhanced. These are basically side effects of hormone changes. These are things like sudden adult acne, especially on the back and shoulders, or particularly on the chest, or accelerated hair thinning. So if someone's genetically predisposed to male pattern baldness, then PED use can fast track it. Or development of breast tissue in males, like you've heard it called gyno or gynecomastia. This happens because the body's uh, trying to balance out the hormonal changes. It's like a really high E2 or estradiol levels. Or a flushed reddish complexion, especially during workouts. But you know, remember, someone might have one or two of these signs naturally. And plenty of people deal with acne or hair loss, for instance. But when you see these changes happen suddenly, especially alongside rapid muscle growth, well, that's when it becomes a telling pattern. The key is looking at the whole picture. Cap delts and mountain peak traps combined with those other physical changes paint a pretty clear picture of what's going on with someone's training approach. The third sign is superhuman recovery, and this is fascinating when you understand the science behind it. Research shows that natural lifters need between 48 and 72 hours between training the same muscle groups, especially after age 30. But it's not just about recovery time, it's about consistency. See, natural testosterone production is like a roller coaster. It's heavily affected by things like sleep quality, so like one bad night can drop your hormone levels by 40%, or stress levels, high 
high cortisol will tank your natural production of testosterone or alcohol consumption. So even a few drinks can suppress your testosterone level for days just overall fatigue or diet variation. So natural lifters have good days and bad days. Some days you're crushing it in the gym, other days you can barely match last week's weights. That's totally normal. It's your body's hormones fluctuating naturally. But when someone's enhanced, they're getting a consistent drip of hormones every day. There are no ups and downs, no bad days. They're operating at peak levels constantly, regardless of sleep, stress, or lifestyle factors. My own example <laughs> to back this up is when I was training with one of my former trainers and after several months of just going hard, uh, he was like, how are you able to bring it every single day? Like you have you know, no recovery needs, it seems like. So I let him in on a little secret, <laughs> but think about it. Natural hormone production can only support so much recovery. It's like trying to rebuild a house with a construction crew that shows up hungover some days, tired others, and sometimes just needs a break. But enhancement, that's like having a perfectly consistent crew working 24 seven at maximum efficiency. When you see someone training the same body parts with the same intensity daily and still growing, never having a bad day, never seeming to need that recovery time, well, that's a major red flag. The human body just does not work that way naturally. Our hormones are not designed for that kind of consistency. Sign number four is rapid recomposition. And this is where the science gets really interesting. See, the research is clear about what's possible naturally. Your body can really only do one of two things effectively at a time. It can build muscle in a slight caloric surplus, or it can lose fat in a deficit. And here's why. Building muscle requires extra calories and optimal hormone levels. Losing fat requires a caloric deficit. These are competing processes. Sure, some people will say, but what about recomposition? And they're partly correct. Natural lifters can achieve some recomp in three specific scenarios. If you're a complete beginner in your first year and you're going through what's called newbie gains, or if you're a detrained athlete and you're returning to fitness, so you're recovering some of those gains you already had, or you're severely overweight and you're just starting training. But outside of those cases, well, the Journal of Sports Medicine found that even elite natural athletes struggle to gain more than two to three pounds of muscle per month, and that's with perfect conditions. But here's where it gets wild. When you see someone gaining 15 to 20 pounds of lean mass while simultaneously getting leaner, well, that defies natural physiology. The research shows that even in a small deficit, natural lifters typically lose muscle along with fat. That's just how our bodies work. They're trying to be efficient with resources. So sign number five, and this is the ultimate tell, here is the most reliable indicator. It combines two powerful scientific concepts, year-round conditioning and something called the Fat-Free Mass Index, or FFMI. And like I mentioned, I didn't know about this before I started researching this video, but I find it extremely interesting now. Let's start with the conditioning part. Studies from the Journal of Applied Physiology show that maintaining sub 10% body fat naturally causes up to 30% drop in natural hormone production, increased cortisol, which is a muscle burning stress hormone, and decreased recovery ability. Even elite natural bodybuilders can only maintain contest condition for a few weeks. The research tracked natural athletes and found significant muscle loss during prep even with perfect training and nutrition. And now here's where FFMI comes in, and this is fascinating. Dr. Eric Helms and his research team developed this formula that basically tells us how much muscle someone can carry naturally. It's like BMI, as unreliable as that is, but specifically for muscle mass. Here's how it works. The formula accounts for your height, your weight, your body fat percentage, and normalizes it all into a single number. Through extensive research, they found that natural athletes typically can't exceed an FFMI of 25 while staying lean. Sure, you might see higher numbers at higher body fat percentages, but maintaining an FFMI above 25 while being shredded, that's basically impossible naturally. Let me put this in real terms. A five foot 10 guy at 180 pounds and 10% body fat would have an FFMI of about 23.5, which is already impressive naturally. When you see someone who's five foot 10, 220 pounds and shredded, their FFMI would be well over 28, which is way beyond 
beyond what research shows is naturally achievable. But enhanced individuals, well, they can maintain that diced look with full muscles year round because they're bypassing these natural limitations. It's like having a metabolic cheat code that overrides your body's natural preservation mechanisms. Remember, none of these signs alone proves anything. Think of them like pieces of a puzzle. The more pieces you see, the clearer the picture becomes. Understanding these signs isn't about judging others. I'm the last one who should judge. It's about setting realistic expectations for your own fitness journey. If you found this breakdown helpful, hit the like and subscribe button for more science-based fitness content, or drop a comment below with your thoughts and questions about natural training limits. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.